Hello guys, gals and empals, and welcome to the feel more, think more, see more in others side of YouTube. Now, if you couldn't tell from that intro line, today's topic is the very popular Jubilee channel, who have millions of subscribers and over a billion views, so you probably are already vaguely aware of or have already heard of them. My original plan for this video was to go into depth specifically on two of their videos, Do All Transgender People Think the Same? and Traditional vs Trans? Are there more than two genders? Because I watched both of them and they caused me intense amounts of anguish and mental pain. They were very classic examples of people not quite knowing how to handle or deal with trans issues and just sort of shoving trans people into the spotlight in a way that was not beneficial to actually further discussing the problems facing the trans community. And you know how that makes me feel. Angry. However, watching those two videos led to me being bombarded by Jubilee's content over the next couple of days. The algorithm having decided that surely I'd love to see all the other content that they have made. I'm not sure how, but Jubilee is one of those channels that just apparently YouTube loves to push at people and has decided that if you watch even just one of their videos, then you clearly must want to see everything they've ever done, ever, because the robots don't know what's going on. But counter to my own gut instinct telling me, no, don't do this, I decided to listen to YouTube and so I watched all of them. Wake me up. And I realized that it wasn't just the usual, a big media company doesn't really know how to handle trans topics and just sort of screws it up so they can get some of those sweet, sweet clicks from a hot button topic. This was a much larger problem that went right down to the core of exactly what Jubilee is trying to do. And it was the same issues cropping up over and over again across almost the entire site and of what they are intending to do. They are, in the nicest possible words, one of the worst channels on YouTube. And in this video, I'm going to try to prove that to you. Trust me, I watched 50 hours of their content. I hated it every moment. I'm hoping that you will understand why I hated it by the end of this video. I disagree with that. You can mow lawns for a few months and make like a few thousand dollars. You know how many lawns I'm gonna have to mow? It's a lot of lawns. So they positioned the channel and themselves as being this moral neutral who is merely there to facilitate you, the audience, becoming familiar with the important topics, the difficult questions, and the poorly covered issues of our time. This is done mostly through their two main flagship projects, although one of them has kind of slowed down a little bit and they've moved to this new one called Sex Education, which I watched a bit of and it was just kind of bland. Like there are other channels that do that stuff better, I don't know why Jubilee felt the need to jump into that, apart from like, maybe it's just popular right now. We want to get into these issues, we want to be able to heal divides, we want to be able to cross boundaries. Click here to subscribe to more videos, click here to watch more videos. But the two main ones that people know them for are the Middle Ground series and the Spectrum series. Each one of these has been running for years at this point, clocking in at over 50 episodes for each and days of watch time. Oh my god, I've wasted my life. And wasted is the correct word here. Because while the intention, or at least the betrayed intention that Jubilee wants you to think of when you look at them, might seem good, the actual presentation and style of each of these series is utterly atrocious and managed to strip away any attempt to be educational or informational or actually give the audience some kind of insight into the views they are supposedly trying to represent. It's like popcorn culture. Bland and uninteresting, really, but it's trying to make itself look better than what it actually is. The reason I'm telling you all this is because I'm playing both sides so that I always come out on top. So... Let's talk about Middle Ground first, though. The most damning of the bunch. The effective premise is, let's get two different sides together and have them hash out their differences in a public forum, thereby giving our viewers an introduction to what each side thinks and hopefully making sure that people know the facts at the heart of the debate. Only, you have three people from each side, the sides are kind of arbitrarily selected with regards to who is representing them, being quite broad and vague in a way that sometimes people on the same side are actually not really agreeing on most of the stuff that they supposedly should be. 
The moderation is non-existent, and there is no conclusion or resolution for the audience. Those are a bunch of huge problems that don't seem apparent if you think of these as, you know, fun little thought experiments. They're not a big deal. They're just kind of, you know, just going over to some silly stuff. Just, you know, the, the trendy things that are in the media right now and just giving people, like, a brief introduction to it. Like, it's not a big deal. But they cover stuff like pro-war people versus undocumented immigrants, identity politics, the Me Too movement, which was feminists versus people who think women should shut up, and let's not forget the is anyone to blame for the pandemic, Chinese citizens versus US citizens, which is just mind-boggling that they could present that in a way that isn't super serious and real hardcore stuff. But don't worry, don't worry. You might be thinking, well, that seems like that would contribute to Sinophobia pretty bad right now in a time when we do not need more of that. But they have a playlist called Hashtag Stop Asian Hate, so... Come on. You're gonna jump on them? They're not helping to spread racist rhetoric and ideas. They didn't do anything wrong. They just let other people say that stuff in front of their huge audience. They didn't say it. They never say anything. They let other people do it for them. The people just ask questions. They just sit on that fence really hard and never ever put any positions for themselves or try to actually, you know, solidify a concrete answer to the questions that they're putting forward. Because that would alienate parts of their audience and would make them have to, you know, pick a side. And that might look biased. So our goal with this video was to just earnestly portray various perspectives that we were hearing and um, not necessarily that we condone these perspectives. And that's the problem. When you are covering serious topics like these, topics where lives hang in the balance, where people getting the wrong ideas and being exposed to conspiracy theories and bigotry can help to normalize them if they are not handled in a professional, engaged manner from the platform that's doing it, then it just leads to the spreading and proliferation of these terrible things that have been ruining the world recently. The people at Jubilee flat out refuse to do anything with the information put forward by the people they invite onto their show. Often, especially in the much more hot topic, very serious right now issue videos, you would see people bring up patently false information or make outrageous claims with no evidence backing them up. And the only pushback would be if someone from the other side knew enough about that particular thing or how to defuse that to push back on it. And I think global warming is a, an infringement on those rights. Uh, when I say global warming, at least the, uh, the agenda of the political aspect of it. I think it's time to change how we live. And even if that person did know enough and did successfully push back and did manage to, you know, present stuff that countered the conspiracy theorists and misinformation spreaders, Jubilee would just leave it like that. Just as, well, they said something, they said something different. Who is right? We don't know, that's for you, the audience, to figure out while we really ram ourselves onto the top of this fence. Did I mention that we don't present any facts or information at all or try to back these people up with, you know, science or evidence in our editing? Because... <sighs> Do not put this on Jubilee, okay? They are just here to exploit this stuff, not to actually make any statements themselves. Seriously, you can't just give people a platform to spread this stuff and then leave it up to the few individuals, individuals that you, Jubilee, have presented in the format you chose as being of equivalent importance. It's like those climate change debates you see on the news or on TV, which of course Jubilee does have their own climate change debate because I mean, why wouldn't they? Where it's like two scientists backed up by the majority of scientific organizations and all evidence collated by thousands and thousands of people and studies against a bunch of absolute idiots who are very loud and confident but have no idea what they're talking about and are just repeating conservative rhetoric that doesn't have anything backing it up. But for the purpose of having a debate, both sides are treat as if their platforms and their positions are equally valid and equally right. Like, it's treated as if, oh well, either side could be correct, you just need to listen to the people and make your own mind up. Would it kill Jubilee, or these news media, to step in on the editing process and direct their audience to which side has, you know, more factual evidence and people with linked education arguing the same thing as them? 
like I've said a few times now though, of course it would hurt Jubilee, because then how could they pretend to be this neutral judge from on high, disconnected from the problems of the world and free from all bias, even when that bias is a little thing that we call overwhelming scientific evidence. In the interest of mathematical balance, I'm going to bring out two people who agree with you, climate skeptic, and Bill Nye, I'm also going to bring out 96 other scientists. <laughs> uh, it's a little unwieldy, but this is the only way you can actually have a representative discussion. And this is when we get to the problem of who they have chosen to represent each side, and the editing that they do around those people. Oftentimes, it's a random collection of people who vaguely share similar ideas or identities shoved together with varying levels of commitment and understanding of what they are talking about. So how is this meant to be educational or informative when the very people who are the only source that we can rely on don't often have any credentials or in-depth knowledge on what they are meant to be telling us about? Seriously. What use is having three people from each side to come and explain to us, the audience who doesn't know anything presumably, when those three people could be of random and utterly arbitrary levels of competence and understanding of what they're actually talking about? We don't get told the in-depth backstories for each of them. We don't know the context of what they know and how they perceive things. We just get shown by Jubilee the edited down versions of what they say. Would you call yourself a feminist? Um, I would. Yes, an intersectional feminist. When you hear the word feminism, what comes to mind? Marxism? <laughs> to me, feminism is fairness. I think that it's unfortunately misguided. Feminism is a flow of the movement. And that's another point. Even aside of all that crap, the editing style is specifically done so that no answers are allowed to actually accurately cover the questions that are asked or get into the meat of the topic that is brought up. They are stripped down to the most basic possible versions that will presumably get those in the audience to either get mad and angry post or smugly proud and happy post. You know, the two ways to get viral. You have people get angry about it or people go, mm, yes, no, I, this is, this is exactly what I think as well. And it's kind of cool to see someone else agree with me online. Yes, let's go and post that to all the people so they can see that I am the smart one now. It's all about that engagement for Jubilee. It's not about having a proper debate or having the actual issues discussed properly. It is just about getting people to click. Whatever is the big thing that people are focusing on right now, they'll do that incredibly poorly and spread a bunch of misinformation and lies that they don't even properly try to address because it gets them millions of views. Classic YouTube. And that is a massive problem here. The issue of having people who struggle to really present the ideas in a way that is useful or deliberately cutting them down to the most buzzwordy version for a shorter, more clickbait video. And that's a problem that is shared by their other flagship series, Spectrum. Do you like me? Yes. Definitely. Absolutely. I rigged it. Spectrum is about grabbing a small number, generally six people, which if you know anything about science is already way too small a sample size to actually, you know, properly reflect a community or to actually show people what those people believe about things from one particular group or identity and then throws a bunch of questions at them that they have to select where they fall on an agree to disagree spectrum, hence the name spectrum. It's, there's a spectrum of the thing. It's a good name, I won't fault them that. This one is a little bit better than the middle ground videos in that it generally tries to at least be kind of good on the, oh look, all people from one identity are not a monolith, they can think differently and feel differently about things, so maybe don't buy into stereotypes and assume that they're all going to believe the exact same things or have the exact same life experience. And that would be a good point, that would be a good way to really showcase things to people, but it wouldn't be a Jubilee video if it wasn't handled in the worst possible way. And it has a similar issue to the other project in the way that it screws up massively. Firstly, we are told nothing about these people beforehand or given a real insight into who they are coming into these questions. Janet? Marty? Who are you people? Marty, I'm scared. We don't know the context of their lifestyles. We don't know the context of exactly what they've gone through. We don't know the context of what they are aware of or what their competency in the discussion they have is. All we know is they are from a grouped together identity and, and that's why they're here. That's it. 
And that's all context which would be super useful for understanding why they might choose what they choose. If, for example, like the trans video, we get a bunch of people together, one of whom is an avowed transsexual, that would be useful information beforehand for understanding why they would then be oftentimes on opposite sides to the rest of the trans people. That would be a good thing to know beforehand for me to go, oh, okay, I see why they would reach that position. And maybe that explains why they have such a differing idea of what being transgender is. Something the audience should probably know. It's interesting to look at this. The young folk, <laughs> the old folk. <laughs> and that's what I've seen through the years is that it's less and less important to the young transgender people, but it still needs to be available. The second issue is that the questions asked are generally these really broad topics that are pretty hard to answer in a simple agree, disagree spectrum. Especially if you want to do so in a way that someone who wasn't really involved in the community could actually take something away from it. Could, you know, get an understanding of why someone would believe that. Just seeing agree to disagree and then just giving the person like 10 seconds to explain their answer isn't really enough to go in depth on some of the much more hardcore questions that do really require someone to probably sit down for a few minutes and listen to someone talk. And that brings me to the third point, the editing. The editing again. This is the one thing Jubilee has complete control over, the editing, and they cannot get it right. They strip down the explanations people give to basically the most bare and generalized forms, crammed into short, snippy bits that presumably people will want to go ahead and, you know, quote tweet, or they'll be able to go ahead and put into like a small thing they can post to people as like, hey, this person has 15 seconds of saying something, go watch them. And not everybody is allowed to give an explanation on why they believe something or hold an opinion. Like the questions are asked, people go into the spectrum and then like one or two people are selected. And presumably the other four people have opinions, I think, maybe, but they are just forgotten. It's possible that they did say something and whatever they said just wasn't good enough to put into the video, wasn't interesting enough to the audience that Jubilee is presumably trying to cater to. So they just scrapped it. So it's the let's listen to the voices of these people, but not all of them, not the boring ones, the exciting ones, the viral, the trending ones. Those are the voices we should be listening to. <laughs> Hi guys. So, <laughs> I think this is more of a multifaceted question because I consider gay as not just who you're sexually attracted to, it's part of an entire experience. And when arguments break out between people, Jubilee just lets that stuff resolve itself between them with no moderation whatsoever about the things people are saying or claiming. A problem that you might recognize is from me saying it literally 10 minutes ago about middle ground. Of course, Absolutely. System. Can you please uh, give me like a list of feminist advocacy organizations Look. that have engaged in any meaningful advocacy to address those issues because there are actually none. Okay. I know that you came with your little research or whatever. I didn't come with a list of like feminist organizations, but I know actively that there are women's organizations that are trying to dismantle those inequalities. Just one, just one name, just one Again, I didn't come with a list, my dude. Th there are no such organizations. If you are the platform, hey, if you've got people spreading misinformation, maybe say something about it. Maybe go, oh, here's some articles that like, showcase this person is actually lying or they're wrong or they don't know what they're saying and therefore maybe their whole position is a little bit untenable and you should be listening to them maybe maybe just do that jubilee please and, and look both the middle ground and spectrum series would be fine i wouldn't care if they didn't try so damn hard to move into doing stuff that is so important right now to people if they just wasted time on Zoomers vs Boomers or do all influencers think the same, then I would care so much less. Because those are things that are, yeah, they're pretty harmless, I don't give a shit, you can talk about them, you can go and make a video about them and like, the results don't really matter. Where the opinions expressed aren't that big of a deal to the world right now, who cares? I would probably think of them if they just did that as MTV style trash TV. But at least they wouldn't be diving into topics where the wrong information can destroy lives and ruin progress. But instead of playing it safe, Jubilee has done that. And they have done it in the most spineless, most weaselly way possible, removing themselves from taking any responsibility or blame for the stuff that is said by the people they have platformed. You've directed every single episode of Spectrum. How do you go about finding out like what prompts to ask. Yeah, how do you do that justice? A lot of research goes into these episodes. We try to meet with people from the group. We also ask you for some prompts. The way to do that is you follow us on Instagram. <laughs> That's the way. And
They don't put Jubilee people in front of the camera for these because they want to leave it to just the individuals they've selected. Because then if they say anything that's risque or wrong or dangerous, it's not Jubilee's fault. It's these people's fault. Not them. Not the platform. Not the people who chose them in the first place and then edited what they said to be in there. I got really angry and too heated, so the dressing gown had to come off because I was just boiling. And I just want to repeat yet again so everyone is aware, I spent days watching Jubilee's content. I can't wake up, wake me up. I wasted so much time going into this stuff just to try to see if there was any bright light, any moment of just good content in there, and there wasn't. And that just, that just hurts me. But make no mistake, what they're doing is platforming. They've taken their words, they've edited down, they've put zero effort into trying to give people context on any of it, and they've just pushed it out to the millions of subscribers, because Jubilee, you know, 6 million subs, there's a lot of people, millions of views every time, and they generally try to act like what they're doing is an important step in fixing these major problems facing our world right now. They act as if they're the solution to the terrible stuff that's happening, that we see in the news, that we see in the media, that all of the problems in the world can be fixed by doing what Jubilee is doing, by opening people's eyes, letting them see the differing sides competing with each other on TV to get them views so they can get paid on YouTube from AdSense. It's all about the money as well. But they're not part of Solution Jubilee. You are like a parody, the worst kind of parody, one that takes itself seriously, of that Heineken Open Your World ad, which tried to do the exact same thing that your Middle Ground series does, but instead of it just being like, oh, here's our public forum platform, they were like, here's building a desk with a beer, and that will help us reconcile huge differences in people. And it was a stupid commercial, because sometimes the two sides were like, vastly different sides where like just them coming together wouldn't be enough to fix the huge divide between the beliefs they had. Like the feminist versus the men's rights activist where the men's rights activist was like, I don't believe women should be allowed to work or be out of the kitchen. Like him just meeting a feminist isn't going to fix that problem. Like him meeting women isn't going to make him go, yeah, no, I actually, you know, women are fine now. Like you need more than a beer and a desk to reconcile those kind of differences. But unlike a stupid commercial that should not be taken by anybody as a serious indictment of any positions or statements or beliefs, Jubilee claims to be helping to make the world better by giving people perspective and a look through each other's eyes. Well, without the context and actual information behind all the statements that the people you platform make, you are not doing anything like that. You are making drama TV just covered in the mask of respectability politics and uh, we're taking things very seriously facade. Jubilee is not actually helping here. If anything, they are making things worse by cutting down these big arguments to just short snippets of interesting tidbits that don't really cover in depth the topics that they are trying to address. And when they say they're giving us a look through people's eyes, the people they present have no background given to why they are who they are. They have no background given to why they believe what they believe. They're just shoved in front of us, and then we're just given a brief answer from each of them on positions that are chosen by Jubilee, that generally just match whatever's the most popular thing right now, and, and, and that's it. It's not helping people to see things differently. All it's really doing is pushing this bland and neutral take on politics, on those things that are affecting people's lives right now from the political sphere. You know what Jubilee's actually kind of like? They're kind of like this meme. This meme here is the Jubilee platform in its entirety taken and stretched out over years and years of content that people consume. And I can't think of any more damning indictment of the channel than that. They are terrible. Jubilee is one of the worst channels on YouTube. They're bad not just because of what they do, but because they pretend that what they do is a good thing. I have no issues with the channels that are like full of stupid shit, because quite often they're not trying to act as if they're like changing the world or making things better. Like, if you're one of those channels that goes around, like, doing silly little drama sub- Like, whatever. You're not acting as if you are giving adults a serious education on political issues. Jubilee is. And that is so much more toxic. So much more dangerous in such a subtle way. That it's ruining the way people see issues. That it's completely messing up the actual hard work done by people who are seriously committed to those problems and trying to give people education on them. Jubilee is terrible, and hopefully, from listening to all this, you might agree with me. <laughs>
for watching another episode of Middle Ground. The reason we do this is to create a movement for human good. And we have a special announcement. We're starting our own clothing line. Anyway, if you like what's in this video and you like the fact that I wasted so much goddamn time of my life watching all those Jubilee videos, then please do all the YouTube stuff. The liking, the sharing, the subscribing, commenting, whatever. The stuff that, like, helps to make this worthwhile, maybe. Because, God, I need something. If you really like what I've done here and you want me to do more of it, then you can give me money on Patreon, where you will help to pay for me to have food while I do this kind of thing. If you think that I've earned my food, then that's a good way of showing that, because I don't get paid from YouTube. I've not monetized and I probably never will be. Other than that, I hope you have a good day, and if anybody comes up to you and says, Hi, I'm from Jubilee. Do you want to come onto our show? Don't. Run. Run away as fast as you can. It's a trick. It's a trap. You've got to get out of there.